the Eddie Jones era uh, didn't get off to the flying start that he was after with the Wallabies. In fact, it was 43-12 against, uh, well, it wasn't the strongest side for the Springboks. Uh, they've already sent players to New Zealand, of course. So he said this during the week. Uh, he's hoping for their best team. He didn't want to take down a half-baked Springbok side. That's Eddie Jones. Well, those comments didn't age well in the post-match press conference from Pretoria today. Eddie, you uh, expressed your disappointment during the week that you weren't playing the first choice Springbok side. Well, I Changed just... a bit of relief now? No, no. I'll tell you what, you are good at it, mate. South Africans are good at winning. Eddie, you took a team to... So Carrie. you don't have to be a smart ass, mate. <laughs> so I never knew there was a Springbok side that was called the B team. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. And you don't have to be a smart-ass man. You don't have to be a smart-ass I love you, Eddie. Eddie Jones just doing Eddie Jones things. He finds a way to take the attention away from his team, who, let's be honest, performed terribly in what was probably their top side that they could have put out. He's now taken all the headlines himself. He finds a way to do this. He's the master manipulator of the media, isn't he? Well, you have to try and change the subject because they were that poor. That bad. They were that bad. Now, look, it's the first test match for them as well. Like Argentina, the fact they'll look at it and they'll get better from this. But they don't match up well for me against South Africa. And that South African side, as much as people... It, it, when you say it's a B team, there were still some real quality players in that. And one thing that doesn't change was them. They're big, they're powerful, and they're direct gusts. And they were really, really good. I mean, this Wallabies team just couldn't stay with them. And, you know, ultimately, the second half, it was one-way traffic. But that's a beautiful transfer. That's, it's nice work on the outside. This wasn't all bludgeoning <laughs> through the middle. They did some really nice things. That's why this team is a threat. Well, you know, sometimes a half-baked cookie can taste quite nice, and, and this half-baked South African side play, played their guts out, you know? They talk about depth and, and these players that have come to New Zealand, but these guys are fighting for a position as well. They've got the talent, and like I said, it was, it was great balance. It wasn't just boof, 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 but when they went boof up through the middle, they got yellow cards, they caused penalties, tries from the forwards. Um, they, I mean, they're looking dangerous, but... Yeah. Key, all Blacks. Defending yeah. champs are here to play. Yeah, let's highlight this. Eddie, Eddie James isn't silly. You know, Tactical. he's very, very calculated with everything he does. So we'll get that out of the road first. What sikes me about this, this weekend, and even though, sorry, the, the, the games just played, the All Blacks and the Springboks mirror each other so well. You know, I think in terms of their squads and how they make up and how they played this weekend. So that's what excites me going into this clash this weekend. Like they've got a lot of questions they need to answer in terms of their starting makeup as well, because those a lot of those players that played just tonight for them. Man, they answered some questions for their coach as well so far out. 100%. They have found a way to build so much depth, isn't, mm. uh, haven't they? And they're not just one-dimensional anymore. They've got this amazing running game too. Let's take a look at the list of players who arrived in New Zealand a week early. They're here at the moment. And here is the list. 11 players. Look at these names. These are the most experienced Springbok players. Malcolm Marks, the Ebenezer Bess. Quagga Smith, Faf de Klerk, Chesham Colby. These are the best of the best. They've been on Waiheke Island today enjoying themselves. And the other half have been out playing golf. This is the way they're easing themselves into test match. But they are here, Jeff. They are waiting for the All Blacks. This, that's what you call a good day off. <laughs> I reckon some of them have done both. They've played golf and then they've gone to Waiheke Island. That's why I like a Sunday. Not like a Sunday, Sunday session. <laughs> Sunday session, I tell you what. Look, they're prepared. Um, look, they're an outstanding squad. They're an yeah. outstanding squad. I mean, you can't underestimate the fact that, and Justin Marshall talked about it, this morning um, uh, on the post-match show, they understand their formula. It is so simple. So their combinations, they're, they're not a difficult thing for them. The, the one thing I'll say, no Andre Pollard. Mm. And to me, he's their talisman in terms of their accuracy in a lot of the game that they play, and particularly in terms of their kicking. It'll be interesting to see the combination of players they choose to take on the All Blacks this week. But you know where they're coming. Yeah. They're coming through the front door. Yep. That's exactly no where they're coming. No hiding. Kick down the front door, see what happens. They see a Khaleesi as well. Quagga Smith, one of the best names going around. I love the Quagga. <laughs> My Quagga Burger, I see you. But they're some world-class players. I mean, that's an outstanding list sitting right there ready and wait for the All Blacks, man. So that's what, is, again, what I find so intriguing and exciting. Yeah, there, there won't be any playing around with, with what's coming in camp with mm. the All Blacks. Uh, Jace Ryan will, will have the boys working hard uh, for the challenge that's coming up. Can you talk to us about the difference for the All Blacks coming home, presumably tomorrow? They'll have a short week. Will Tuesday be sort of an easy week? Wednesday and Thursday will be your harder days. And how that compares to the box players who have been here for a week, what their weeks look like? 
I mean, you sort of get to the end of the week and, and they'll be doing whatever they need to be fresh. So it might, it might be a bit of a lighter start, but by Thursday, you know, we've got world-class people in there to, to, to make the right calls and get things humming. By Thursday, the boys will have nailed their stuff. Saturday night, they're, they're hissing. That's, that's the only option that, that they have. And, you know, you're representing your, your country in New Zealand against Springboks, which is, you ask most All Blacks, one of their favourite tests to play. It's, it's the biggest challenge, the best challenge outside of a World Cup. So the boys will be, boys will be up for it. And I think these two guys know probably the best. Like, for a while, the All Blacks dominated that rivalry. But I think this is a genuine rivalry with this current Springbok team, with the world champs, current world champs, and those are world-class players. So now we can't pick who's going to win, whereas the previous years we probably could. So... Yeah, look, it's a challenge for the Springboks to come here and play, though. We've had great success here in New Zealand. And, and at home, we do tend to play well, but Mount Smart Stadium's not familiar territory for Test Match Rugby. Um, and so, you know, I, I look at this, this match-up, I'm fascinated to see who we play. Mm. Because we, we pretty much know who they're going to play. They've told us who's going to play. They're here already. Mm. But they also haven't had the ability for that combination to get together yet and train. They've been here, the other team's been at home. Whereas the All Blacks decided to take all of their players to Argentina, thinking they need as much time on the ground. So you might have already seen, they may have already trained together, the group that's going to play this weekend. So they don't maybe have to do as much work on the ground when they get home. And, and I'll, I'll tell you what, sometimes that can work against you. You haven't been in, in the dark trenches and you, you know, you're trying to overwhelm with an intensity, uh, with a physicality. And if you haven't played a test match the week before and you're coming into it, you know, not a, you might be fresher, but you haven't got that contact and the feeling of a test match, it can play both ways. You see, it, it takes it out of you, well, I suppose it's a catch-22, right? Taking the squad over to RG and the travel time there and back. These guys are professionals. Yeah. You know, I think that they look after themselves well, they uh, prepare well, they've got a backroom staff that mm -hmm. understand the challenges uh, involved with that, but yeah. ultimately they haven't had the benefit of having this group together. You know, when you have two teams make it all the way through to Super Rugby in the final, yeah. and the majority yeah. of the All Blacks are involved in that, you can't, you can't control that situation. So Ian Foster, if he didn't take them, he's lost a full week mm. of training time and preparation time for that group. So how were the box able to do it then? How were they able to send 12 players to New Zealand early? Had they had more time yeah. together or something? I don't think they're searching for probably the, the game the plan, the combination yeah. that the maybe That's the All Blacks the are. Yeah. Because, because I think if you look at the way that they play, it, it, there's a simplicity. And they're so very, very good at it. And they can come back to type very, very quickly. So that would be my take on it, my understanding. And we have had some players put their hand up and say, you know what, I, I, I want an opportunity. And injuries have given and presented those opportunities as well. Mm. Well, no doubt about it, it is going to be one heck of a test coming out from Mount Smart Stadium. And guess what? It's sold out, so you have to watch it live here on Sky Sports. Still plenty of rugby to come. The international season was well underway. We talk the All Blacks 15, side who took on Japan A and the Black Ferns coming up as well.